So yeah, again, um, the idea here is that I want to compute all the possible combinations of three words and give them a score. I'm going to care about the average result when you loop through all the answers, uh, not an, an individual answer how well a given combination will do for that particular answer in order. Um, that will be very easy. The best combination will be any combination that has that particular um, word in it. Uh, an important thing here is that this is not a word solver. The reason that this is not a solver, and I didn't want to do a solver, is because most solvers um, depend on you having a knowledge on the back of words after a given uh, try. Like, for example, if I try hello and I have a green and a yellow after, after using that word, um, I'd reduce the, the space of, of words that I can use later. Um, and after then, you will have just a single word in the back state. Uh, and that will be your answer. So I think like pretty much nobody here can remember the decision tree of 30,000 words. So I wanted to do something that would work for, on average for every single word that um, word it has as an answer. And the aim here is not to have a very low uh, amount of attempts. I wanted to just have um, as much as a success ratio as possible. I didn't care if it was in the sixth try, or if it was in the th third, or the fourth, or whatever. Um, in case that you want a word solver, there's this video from 3Blue, Ron Brown. Uh, it's a mathematician that makes videos in YouTube. He's incredible. So check him out. It's very nice. Uh, so why did I do this? Why did I spend the time on coding this and preparing the slides and whatnot? Um, so why not? Yeah, I think it's something fun. Why not do it? But there's a second second um, reason. When World started, my friends started playing. I started playing a little bit after them. And I had like similar idea like this, right? Like you play three words, try to eliminate as many letters as possible, and then you get an answer. And of course, my friends being as supportive as they are, they said it was a stupid idea and I was stupid for trying that. And I wanted to prove them wrong. And if Apache Seven is not to prove wrong your friends, I don't know what it's for. Uh, but yeah, there's some good things about it. Uh, and I think it's a good example to showcase two things. Um, why divide and conquer works uh, when you have a, such a big space as the one we, we were going to have here? And uh, something as parallelizable as we're going to have here. And I think it also shows uh, one uh, why when you know a little bit about your data, but you don't know enough, you can improve um, how you analyze your data to make it faster and get similar conclusions and do it better. And also, I was bored and I wanted to have an excuse to get out of work. And this was a very good excuse. So how did I did it? Um, again, this is something highly parallelizable. BIM is a very good fit for, for this. I didn't need to care about what I should send to what core or whatever. This is everything take, taken care of from, from the runner. So I was good to go. And even though I knew a little bit about the data, I needed something to, once I calculate the score of all the words, give me the best one. So give me something that I can actually call the best combination. Um, so a very good uh, tool for this would be BigQuery, especially if you work in Google and this is free for you. So yeah, BigQuery was it. Also, it's like very easy to write from Beam to BigQuery. Um, the connectors are very strong and very easy to use. So I think it was a good idea. Um, so how actually I implemented everything. When I start this type of um, project or something, I want to, uh, I, I like to start saying what's, what can go wrong? Uh, why, why am I trying to do it? What can get out of what I'm, I was thinking? So the biggest thing here is since what it allows something around 30,000 words, a little bit less, if I blindly join them together, I get something of that order, like two to the uh, multiply by 10 to the 12 words. This is huge. This is a very big space of combinations. Um, so we need to be smarter than that. We need to do something to reduce the space of combinations to something lower. And here comes my, my assumptions, and this is why uh, knowing a little bit about your data makes it faster. So I had three, three, uh, three big ideas. The first one, yeah. Um, I'm going to filter the words that have a duplicate within them. For example, the word hello there um, has the L twice. So I'm not going to use that word to combine anything. The reason is um, you already have the knowledge of that particular letter, the L, and you don't need it twice. It's true that you're going to have some words and are going to have two letters repeated, but in general, it's not a particularly good idea. Uh, for using the same logic, I'm not going to combine words that share a letter, that have a letter intersection. So for example, the word logic and great, I'm not going to combine them because they share a G, 
but logic and handy, they're good to go. And lastly, um, I'm since I'm doing a cross join with the words, uh, there's going to be duplicates. If I have word A and word B, I'm also going to have word B and word A. So I just remove one of those, and that's taking a sixth of the data. Um, so the benefits of, of this, uh, this approach. The first one we get from two, tri two trillion combinations to a little bit more than 144 million. This is 50,000 times less words. So it runs everything 50 times thousand faster. And actually it's even faster than that because this approach of removing the duplicates on the letters makes uh, calculating the score easier for an individual word. Um, because you don't, like, if you have something that is yellow, you are 100% sure that it's going to be yellow. Uh, any other approach that have you allow repeated letters, you might have a green later on and you're counting it as a yellow. And more importantly, uh, you, since there are not letting intersection between the words, you can add up the scores. You can say um, word one plus word two, the scores, just, you just add the scores. And it makes it, makes it comp commutative and associative. So again, I don't care about the order even, even less than um, all the way around. So these are very good uh, approaches to, to make the, the pylon way faster. Um, on the beam side, and this is actually the good code. Um, I tried to show a little bit of it, but it might be a little bit cumbersome. So uh, it's in GitHub. You can see it later if you want. I actually published it like a minute ago. <laughs> um, so when we read the words from, uh, from Wordle, there are two types of words. Words that are going to be an answer eventually, like maybe in a week, maybe in a, in a year, but they're going to be an answer. And there are words that Wordle allows you to use, but they're never going to be an answer. So you can use them, but they're never going to be the final word that you want to use. Um, so basically what I'm doing here, I combine the two words, filter them by the duplicate letter, and then I calculate, calculate, the, um, calculate the score. So to filter, it's just a simple set, compare the length, and that should be it. And in order to compute the, the score, what I'm doing is for a single element in my, in my main input, which will be word one, I look through all the possible answers and rank them. So for example, if the final word is hello and I get uh, a one green and one yellow and uh, the, next, um, the next try uh, on the answer is uh, one green, at the end I will have two greens and two yellows, right? So it's just adding the score that I have for every single word. Um, and I do that through all the P collection, right? And I will have um, a resulting P collection with all the possible words and how much will they score compared to all the answers. Um, so this is how the call looks like to do this. Um, so I look through the answers over there and then I combine them uh, and send them as a tuple. The reason they are a tuple I will come handy in, in a few slides. I will explain it later. Um, so yeah, uh, now that we have a combination of words with the score, we just make the cross product of, of, of those two. For every single word that we have in the main input, we combine it with all the possible um, words on the site input, and the site input is the P collection itself. So for example, in this case, we have uh, word Y with the score Y, and we loop through all the site input, which is the same P collection by itself, and we make the, the, the combination, and we add up the scores. That's again the benefit of making um, this, uh, the, taking the, the benefits of, of reducing the space, we can add the, the scores together. Uh, but as I said, we have to be smarter than this. Um, so there's going to be some words that I'm not going to join because they have uh, the, inter the letter intersection. So for example, in this case, word Y and word two, they're not going to be together. And again, we are looping through all the P collection again. So if now we have the uh, side input, uh, so the main input, word X and score Y, score X, um, we might have done it already uh, with, uh, with the first letter, with word Y. Um, so we, we're going to have duplicates. We see that we, in the, on the right side, um, we have word Y, word X, word X, word Y. So that's a duplicate, and we take it out. Um, the way I'm doing this is uh, when I output the, um, the word, when it's combined, I output it alphabetically order. So the elements are going to be the same. And that's where these things come, come, come handy, right? Um, the reason that I was using the tuple is because distinct uses the hash of an element to say if it's different or not. And uh, the tuples are hashable, dictionaries are not, so tuples watch it. Um, now that we have the combination of two words, 
we need to get the combination of three words. So we again look through all the scores for one letter and we again join it together. So in this case, our element is going to be word Y, word one with a specific score. And we loop through all the words again and make the combinations. As you can see, this generates a lot of elements. So that's why we needed this um, benefits of reducing the space. So that's how the code looks like. Again, very cumbersome. It's in GitHub if you want to actually read it. Uh, but um, as you can see there, we have the side input. And we check if the letters have intersection. So if there are two letters uh, that are shared between the, between the words, and if they, are, if they don't have an intersection, so they don't share the letter, um, we format it. We pass the order ordering alphabetically. And then we output it. Um, so now we have a big collection with the score of all the, the words with one single word, the combination of two, the combination of three. We just need to format everything and write it to BigQuery. And now the BigQuery side, now we are getting closer to the answer. Um, one important thing here is how do we get a best word? What's a best word in, in, in this combination? What's the, how, how can we actually analyze it? Um, and what's going to be our strategy? So this is what I thought of, right? So it's clear that the greens are more valuable than the yellows, but by how much? Is it two times more? Is it three times more? Is it just 1.5? Um, and I started thinking about it and I said like, probably once you have three words, the value of a green is less compared to when you only have one word or two words in the combination, right? And I've been tinkering around, I came up with these two values. So when there's three words, the greens are going to be 1.75 more valuable than, than the yellows. But when you have two words, since you have less knowledge about the end word, um, the final word, um, you, uh, you're going to output, uh, you're going to value it as 2.25. And even though we want to have the best combination out of three, if that particular set of words is very bad when you have two, uh, when you only have to you have a read on two tries, it's probably not going to be very good. So we want something that's very good with three, but it's also good with two. Um, this is how the big table, uh, the big quality table looks like. Uh, so we have the words there and the amount of uh, greens that has, and on average, the amount of yellows, and yeah, if it has three words or two words or whatever. Um, the query to get the scores of the first three, um, three combinations is very easy. It's just doing a select, a half a weighted score of one to 175 for. Um, uh, as a ranking and ordered in by that, right? So if we do this, we get these words with, uh, yeah. So it's Count, Pride, and Charlie. No, I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. And that's the score that you get. Uh, but if you check the weighted score, um, pretty much all of them are close to five point something. Uh, and I don't think there's a big difference if you say, OK, I'm going to take the last one versus the first one, right? Probably you, on average, you're going to do pretty much the same. But maybe they are different uh, when used two, right? So I said, OK. So anything that has more than five as a score is going to be good enough. But maybe the difference is when you try this, the two words. Um, so for example, in Count, Pride, Charlie, uh, and Jams, Kylix, something, um, which by the way is the worst combination, um, I want to generate the combination of two words out of that. So for example, it's going to be Count, Pride, Count, Charlie, and Pride, Charlie. And I'm going to check how good they are. In order to do that, they have this monster query. Um, again, maybe a little complicated or not, I don't know. Um, the first part is just generating the splits of the three words and filtering by um, how well they did with the th three combinations. And then I just loop through all the words that were generated out of that and see how well they did um, with the two, two words. And if we run the query, it takes some time, but we get this result. And uh, we have Prade Soily, which did very well um, for two with 4.41. And it also did rather good with, um, with three, three score. We have it on the very right over there. Uh, and if you check this data, there's nothing uh, that has a significantly um, bigger score for three that does as well as, as Prade Soily does for two. So yeah, Prade Soily seems to be the winner. Um, so it performs rather well with three, and it also performs rather well with two, actually on the top 1%. Um, so yeah, this is the final answer. And this will be the way you should pray in this order. But as an honorable mention, if you're willing to give up a little bit of um, score for the three words, 
create soil and band, I don't know. Um, that's better than Pratt the and Dance for the two words, uh, but a little bit less for, for three. So if you want to risk it a little bit and try to get a better answer for two, you can go with Crate Soily and Bands. And yeah, can we do better? I think we can, uh, but I don't think it's easy. So every language has its own quirks and um, it's clear that, for example, words ending with a Y are going to be easier to guess than some other words because if you have soil, probably it's going to be a, e at, a Y at the end, right? And some letters are harder to guess than the other ones. But, but how much? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think you could do better if you have the knowledge of English language and everything. And yeah, maybe you can have a better score. But in case you didn't notice, I'm not a native speaker, so I cannot do that. <laughs> and just let me do BIM. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit of the conclusions that I had when I was running this. So at the very beginning, I started saying like, okay, this is huge. I cannot compute 13,000 to, uh, to the power three combinations. And then I started thinking like, okay, how can we reduce that? And the, the way I wanted to verify that my process was right was intuitively, does the answer make sense? And if we go back one slide, uh, you can see that all the vowels are there which I expected that, all the most common letters are also there. So R, S, the Y, which apparently is super common, the, uh, the N, and so on. So yeah, that was a way for me to verify everything. And I think that even though I made some assumptions, I think it was fair to do those assumptions. And I think these answers, again, these answers are the best you can do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you have the link to GitHub there. Uh, the code is a bit messy because I uploaded like 30 seconds, like 30 minutes ago. But yes, do you have any questions?